Praise the Lord. For I saw up as we pray together. Our God in heaven, we thank you for this retreat. I will thank you for the power for the present hour. We pray, Lord, you energize your people tonight in Jesus' name. Empower every one of us. Help us, Lord, to live a life that is pleasing unto thee and glorifying unto you in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, that everything you need to do in every heart, every life, every soul and mind, we pray, Lord, we open the door before you. Do it in Jesus' name. Grant us understanding in your word. Grant us the passion, the desire for what you want to do in every life in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to stretch our lives, our hearts on the altar of the Lord. That you will do everything you purpose to do. And Lord, we pray you prepare every one of us for glory for heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're looking at Luke chapter 1 and we're reading from verse 74 all through to verse 75. Luke chapter 1 verse 74 that he would grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives those verses describe to us the plan of god the purpose of god the provision of god the promise of God. It also tells us our purpose for living. It gives us the understanding of the passion we ought to have, the pursuit we ought to have, and the practical implication of Christ walking in our lives. But it also tells us the hindrance we have and it defines for us the greatest of enemies in our lives look at that verse again that he the lord himself that he the god of abraham isaac and jacob that he the god of covenant that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear hold on who is an enemy who is your greatest enemy from what enemy do you need deliverance many people are pointed at this man that woman that individual that personality as the enemy the one who hinders you serving god with all your heart the one who hinders you loving god with all your heart all your soul all your mind the one who disturbs you from holding on to the promises of god and the one who allow who does not allow you does not release you to serve god without fear that's the enemy because it says that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies and when that deliverance comes we serve him 
without fear in holiness and righteousness if there's any enemy a great enemy a powerful enemy an identified enemy a recognized enemy that you need to be saved from the one that hinders holiness in your life the one that doesn't want you to get to heaven the one that stands in the way psychologically the one that stands in the way spiritually the one that stands in the way physically and he says he wants to block the way of holiness and heaven for you that's the enemy the one that will not allow you to serve the lord in the office in your community in your home in your village i will not allow you to live on the conviction of holiness you have that's the enemy that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him the one that stands between you and god and it blocks your view you can't see the promises of god before him you can't see the provision of god before him you can't see the power of god before him he blocks your view he blocks your mind you want to think on spiritual things that enemy will not allow you you want to think on of that holiness and righteousness before god all the days of your life he puts a punctuation mark he puts a stopping mark he puts a discouraging mark in your life you want to run he'll not allow you to run the way of righteousness and his fear have fear grips you that you want to stand on conviction and you want to stand by courage and you want to live a life of holiness and righteousness before god all the days of your life but that man will not allow whatever man so close to you as your right hand and so precious to you as your right eye and it stands in the way the lord has brought us together that all those things that stand in our way the way of holiness and the way of righteousness we're going to overcome he'll give us the power present power positive power practical power perpetual power you wake up in the morning you feel the nearness of the lord the presence of the power of the lord and you know you have a backbone you have conviction and you say by his grace because of the experience he puts within me today i'm going to serve the lord without fear every conviction i have i get to that office any conviction i have i get to that family every conviction i have i get to that community and there is no fear of anything or anyone that you say he has so delivered me he has so set me free that he released me from the fear of angels or demon or men or women or circumstances or situations and i have the conviction that today i will live in holiness and righteousness before him and i'm going to do that today and tomorrow and the next week and the next month and the next year all the days of my life that's what he's talking to us about holiness perfect perpetual power for true holiness the life of holiness is commanded by the lord not only commanded is promised by the lord not only promised is provided by the lord himself this holiness is not a restricted experience this holiness is not a restricted area of life acceptable holiness is obtained by grace experienced in the heart expressed in the life the holiness we're talking about we're it. we obtain it by grace 
through faith and then we experience it in the heart the cleansing of the heart the purging of the heart the purifying of the heart and we express it in the life of righteousness holiness the holiness we're talking about is entire holiness holiness that affects our thoughts holiness that directs our desires holiness that grieves a conversation monitors a conversation holiness with private relationships whatever relationships we have with a man with a woman the holiness that regulates what we say what we do how we act how we relate with anyone is the holiness that also affects our public responsibilities we get to the office the holiness is there and anything we do in the office anything we sign in the office the remembrance of holiness before him all the days of our lives will guide us holiness in business practice there are many shady things other people can do many christians so-called christians they leave their christian experience in their church and once they get out of church they get to the place of work there's no holiness but the holiness we're talking about holiness before god all the days of our lives is the holiness that affects our family as well husband and wife wife and husband when they are together when they are absent from each other the holiness that guides their thoughts their action their behavior their interaction with other people their faithfulness to the covenant of marriage it's the holiness that affects our finance it's not just that we have holiness when it comes to normal behavior it affects your attitude to money affects when you when you are paid something for example and you're giving more than should have been given holiness affects you you say no that's not my right and you return the extra to the person who has made that mistake the holiness that affects you you want to sign anything in the place of work you're not allowing you just sign it just sign it let me know what i'm signing who is this check for what has he done what contract do we have with him or with her whose company is this it's a kind of holiness that affects a finance is the holiness that affects our friendships the people you are friendly with if they don't love holiness check it they don't accept holiness check it you are hindered restricted afraid talking holiness with him that's not a friend you're afraid discussing holiness purity of heart the ticket to heaven you're afraid to discuss that with her that's not a friend if you have such a friend and you're so close inseparable you're not as holy as the lord desires you don't have the holiness in its depth in its entirety that will take you to heaven we're talking about holiness that affects your appearance affects your look affects your dressing affects you you want to step out of the house it's not am i okay am i all right am i presentable that's not the question does this show you believe in holiness does this transmit holiness does this reflect holiness does this show this is a holy man of god this is a holy woman of god it's holiness that affects your comportment the way you carry yourself in society 
the things you do the things you refuse to do the company you keep and the company you refuse to keep is the holiness that affects our purpose in life our goal in life our dreams in life i dream my dream my dream i have a dream does it comply with holiness the holiness that affects our plans our pursuits holiness that affects our worship you're in the house of god you are worshiping are you conscious that there is holiness in worship and that what you do what you think how you comport yourself in the house of the lord that that also reflects holiness holiness in a spirituality you are not frivolous you are not caref carefree you are not careless you are not non-challenged you are not a person that is light you are witchy because your life your heart your mind your focus your pursuit and your disposition is affected by holiness and god has promised that he'll grant us power perpetual power for holiness before him at all times is this kind of holiness that the lord says will take us to heaven hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 14 follow peace with all men you understand that because this world is not your home the people who don't think about heaven they think about property they think about land they think about houses they think about certificate they think they think about every other thing and every scene will challenge your holiness and it says follow peace with all men there are people they, they know that thing belongs to you they know that land belongs to you and they know that that property belongs to you they know this is your right they want to pull and drag they want to do everything to get you out of your inheritance like ahab wanting to get the vineyard of neighbors and it says even in that you don't lose your cool you don't lose your focus you don't lose your life there are people that know that you are the appointed person to do this or do that they take that authority from you they take that power from you and they're ready to fight because they're they not thinking of heaven you are the one thinking of heaven they're ready to assault and insult they're ready to condemn and contradict but it says follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord this is a perpetual holiness is talking about and it takes perpetual power perpetual strength perpetual conviction that you understand that this power to live the holy life that the lord has called me here for to receive i will receive it and nothing nothing no enemy will be allowed to distract or detract to diminish or to minimize this great experience of the christian life i pray you'll cherish it from tonight in jesus name perpetual power perpetual power perpetual power when anything contradicting holiness comes your way that you have that perpetual power to stand on that holiness without which no man shall see the lord he'll give the power to us i said he'll give the power to us i have three points number one the insufficient expression of how to watch holiness the insufficient expression of how to watch 
holiness. Number two, the indispensable experience of inward holiness. Indispensable, non negotiable, irreplaceable. Nothing else can take its place. The indispensable experience of inward holiness. Number three, the identifiable evidence of internal holiness. Identifiable evidence. Anybody can give testimony. Praise the Lord. I am holy. There are identifiable evidences that you can check off from the Bible and say, that's an evidence there. That's the evidence there. That's the reality there. And if the evidence is not there, whatever the testimony, if the marks are not there, whatever the bragging, and if all the things we have in Scripture as the evidence of that inward, inner, internal holiness, if those things are not there, it drives us to Calvary once again and to say, I know that without this evidence, I cannot claim to have what I don't possess. Identifiable evidence of internal holiness. Number one, insufficient experience, expression of outward holiness. Nobody sees our hearts. Nobody can see our thoughts except it comes out in action, attitude, expressed outwardly. But you see, there are people that might appear to be outwardly holy, externally righteous. And yet, we need to go beyond that because what people appreciate in our lives outwardly they're not sufficient to get us to heaven look at this matthew chapter 23 matthew chapter 23 reading from verse 28 matthew 23 Verse 28, it tells us in verse 28, even so, there's Christ talking, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. The people you live with, the people you interact with, the people you walk with, the, the people you sell to, the people around you, they may see you as outwardly righteous. It might even go beyond the character. In appearance, there's no jewelry. In appearance, you seem to cover your nakedness. In appearance, you look like the rest of them. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. In your religious life, you observe the Sunday, the Lord's Day. You come to church. You read the Bible. And there are things who say, I don't do this, I don't do that. There are things who say, no, no, I'm a Christian. I don't touch that area. You appear righteous unto men. And maybe sometimes there are people that will make some overtures to you, advances to you. I'll say, oh, what do you mean to ask something like that from me? I'm a married woman. Good. You appear righteous outwardly unto that man and there are people that will say 
take this bribe. Say no. I make covenant for the Lord. He is the one that will prosper me. I don't do that. You appear righteous unto men. All those things are good, but they are the outward expressions of the outward life. Holiness life. But now it says, but within in your thoughts, your mind, your feelings, your desires, your inward struggles within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity mark chapter 6 reading from verse 20 mark chapter 6 verse 20 for herod feared john john was a preacher the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And Herod had this outward superficial fear of John. That's good, not sufficient though. And when he heard him, he often heard John the Baptist. When he heard him, he did many things and heard him gladly. Those are good qualities, but they're not enough. You hear the word of God. I love Pastor so and so when he preaches. I appreciate his handling the word of God. That's just like Herod. That's good. That's good. Not enough. And I hear him gladly. That's good. That's not enough. But when John touched the delicate point of his life, and John said, it is not right for you to take your brother's wife. As long as John did not go near that kind of doctrine. As long as John did not talk about marriage and divorce. As long as John did not talk about taking another person's wife. Herod was okay. Herod was all right. Superficial righteousness. I love him when he talks about faith. He talks about healing, he talks about miracle, he talks about science and wonders, and he talks about progress and prosperity, and he talks about this and that. Wait until we talk about marriage, and we talk about a pure life, a righteous life, pure within and pure without, a kind of life that has nothing secret to do with a man to do with a woman ah ah we lose them the outward righteousness outward holiness is not enough it's not sufficient the work of grace that goes deep in the heart circumcises the heart purges the heart cleanses the heart purifies the heart a kind of experience that god will turn in such light and microscope on your heart and they will not see any defiling sin holiness before god all the days of our lives luke chapter 16 the insufficiency of outward holiness Luke chapter 16, reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they who justify yourselves before men. There are many people who live a kind of life that you will justify. I said, Man, you'll say, Really? I've been with him, I've been with her for how many years now? I cannot point to anything I will say. This is unjust. This is unrighteous. This is a blame. Something worthy of blame. And it says here, they, which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. This is where holiness should begin spring out come out 
and shine forth he knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god the people who live such superficial lives and outwardly it appears everything is all right what can you find that you label them as sinners what will you find that you label them as backsliders as far as the eyes of men can see they appear just justified righteous holy in the outward expression but when God now searches, because he knows the heart, then he knows that everything is not all right. Second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25 verse 2. And he did that which was right. And he did that which was right many times when you read a verse of scripture if you don't read the whole verse and sometimes the verse following you'll be deceived you'll say that's what i want to be that's what i want to do that's the place i want him to find me read on and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. The action is colored somehow. The action is affected somehow. Before men, before priests, before high priests, before pastors and senior pastors, before overseers and superintendents, he did that which was right, even in the sight of the Lord. And as the Lord now looked inward, he says, but not with a perfect heart. The Lord wants us to go beyond what people see, what people appreciate, what people honor, and what people exalt. And you need to also look at your life and say, they may praise me, they may honor me. Do they know my heart? Do they know my mind? Do they know the depths of the thoughts that run in my heart? They might say, it's an example of holiness. She's an example of holiness. What do they know about you? Go back to God. Let him search your heart. And let him tell you, I need to purge this, cut off this. I need to transform this. And I need to perfect this. Look at a man in Numbers chapter 22. Numbers chapter 22. The insufficient expression of outward holiness. Look at this. Numbers chapter 22, reading from verse 18. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, look at this, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the words of the Lord my God to do less or more. You cannot find any, any fault with that verse. Any fault with that conviction. Any fault with that expression. It says, money, nothing to me. Go tell him. If Balak will give me half of his house full, if, if he even gives me his house, Full of silver and gold. Go and tell him. This is a man of conviction. I cannot go beyond. What God wants me to do. Bela. Bela. You think 
he was free from covetousness verse 38 in verse 38 and Balaam said unto Balak lo I am come unto thee have I now any power any liberty at all to say anything the word that God put us in my mouth that shall I speak what are you looking for in a pastor more than that what are you looking for in a holiness man holiness woman more than that but hold on that's just the outward expression of that holiness you're going to read more before you can find about Balaam and all the things he expressed in the way of holiness they were not sufficient to take him to heaven chapter 23 verse 10 23 verse 10 who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his somebody said show me the prayer requests of a man and i'll tell you what kind of man he is uh -uh, you can tell here balaam prayed and he said let me die the death of the righteous he knew what righteousness was and he expressed it outwardly verse 12 and he answered and said must i not take heed to speak that which the lord has put in my mouth think about that the outward expression of this man's holiness verse 26 for balaam answered and said unto balak told not i thee saying all that the lord speaketh that i must do what else holiness outward expression you'll be deceived by lots of people if you listen to just what they say and you are sucked in and you are taken in you are deceived people like balaam they know how to play their games and they know how to say what you want to hear. They will know how to express themselves. As a holiness preacher, this is what he wants to hear. And he tell you exactly what you want to hear. But holiness is beyond that. Chapter 24, verse 12. Chapter 24, verse 12. And Balaam said unto Balak, Speak not I also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak will give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad in mine own of my own mind. But what the Lord says that will i speak oh you see i've been following that man i see the man i hear the man i examine the man i hear him talk i look at his life all you can look at will be the outward expression of holiness but it's not sufficient because god knows the heart it is possible to imitate Christians and to put on an exterior of holiness in character, an exterior of holiness in conduct, an exterior of holiness in comportment without having a clean, pure, holy heart. There are people, if they know what they're looking for, there are people, if they know what they want to get out of a church, 
there are people if they know what they want to get out of a man out of a woman for that period they will school themselves guard themselves imprison themselves cage themselves limit themselves so that you will not see what will discourage you from giving them what they want to get out of you when they, once they get it after they've got it now they can come out in the true colors you know this Balaam in all that we have read you will never say the man was covetous. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 2. In Second Peter chapter 2. Here we're reading from, from verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery. That cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which are forsaking the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozo, who loved. The wages of unrighteousness. You don't have seen that. But now the Holy Spirit brings it out. That man appeared to be free from covetousness. Or greed. Or avarice. Or the love of money. Look at the expression. Of his stand. Of his conviction. Of his life. Looks like an holy man. Not really. Jude. Chapter 1, verse 11. Warn to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Corey. Greed. You don't have known that from what he said. Your house full of silver and gold? I'm not interested. All I want is to do the will of God and obey the word of God. Talk of mouth. Not a real experience. Revelation. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast his tumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Balaam couldn't get the money he actually wanted. He kept on saying, I don't need your money. I don't want money. I'm not covetous. All I want is just to do the will of God. All I want is to live a life and die the death of the righteous. And then the Lord will not allow him to curse the children of Israel. And the Lord changed the curse into a blessing. He actually wanted to. He wanted to. He wanted to. With all the testimony, all the expressions, I cannot do it, I will not do it. I'm going to follow the way and the will of the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Verse 4, verse 5. Because they met you not with bread when you came forth out of Egypt. And because they hired against thee, Bela, the son of Baal of Pethor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Look at verse 5. Nevertheless, 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 the Lord thy God will not hack in unto Bela, but the Lord thy God turned 
the curse into a blessing unto thee. He actually wanted to curse them. And the Lord turned the curse into a blessing because the Lord thy God loved thee. It's very clear that the outward expression, the outward lie, the outward behavior before men, that outward expression is not sufficient to say, I am holy. We need salvation, conversion, regeneration. And we go beyond that. We need the kind of sanctification of heart that produces purity and holiness of heart. Point number two, the indispensable experience of inward holiness. Indispensable. Irreplaceable. Nothing to take its place that we need to have from the presence of the Lord himself. Experience of inward holiness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25 Husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church a cleansed church a righteous church a church that has the mind to be holy the desire to be holy Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. The purpose of giving us the word every time is not to tickle our ears. It's not to excite us. It's not to pet us, entertain us. It's to wash us, to purge us, to prepare us for heaven. And it says that he might present you to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy. The holiness that goes beyond outward expression. Holy within and without blemish. He wants to renew that spirit of holiness within us. We're looking at chapter 4 of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 23, verse 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. It says, as Adam could not create himself, as Eve could not create herself, we cannot recreate that heart of holiness in ourselves. That's why we go to God and then he creates that righteousness and true holiness within us. Our association with him, our intimacy with him, brings that inward righteousness, inward holiness. Romans chapter 11, verse 16. For if the first fruit be holy, the lamb is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. It's not talking of Christ. And he's saying, if Christ is represented by the tree and is holy in the root, now you are the branches, we are the branches. 
and it says if the root is holy the branches will be holy he himself used that language john chapter 15 verse 1 i am the true vine and my father is the husband man every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purges it that it may bring forth more fruit the fruit of holiness it tells us in first peter chapter one first peter chapter one verses 15 and 16. first peter 1 15 as he as he as he which has called you is holy how is he holy outwardly no beyond that we're talking about god who has called us how is he holy partially no we're talking about god who has called us how is he holy temporarily no we're talking about god who has called us how is he holy as he notice that as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation private public when believers are there when believers are not there when your husband is there when your wife is not there holy every time holy in the heart holy in the mind holy in the aspirations holy in ambition holy in everything as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy fearlessly holy courageously holy uncompromisingly holy tenaciously holy persistently holy that whatever any gain that will come to you any privilege that will come to you if that privilege decreases holiness you say get away with that privilege i don't want that because as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversations any relationship you have that you'll be afraid to be holy is a dangerous hell bent hell bound relationship any job you have that has the propensity the tendency of taking holiness away from you that's a hell saint job any kind of person that is so important to your life that drills and drives fear the fear to be holy drills that into you and when it's there when she is there you cannot carry out your conviction that's a satan imposed friend wants to take you to hell but you want to understand the holiness the lord is calling you to is a fearless holiness you're not considering mr so-and-so miss so-and-so mrs so-and-so acquaintance so-and-so friend so-and-so if they see that i live like this they may not be happy of course of course of course they will not be happy let them be as angry as nebuchadnezzar if you're going to get to heaven as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy the lord will do it i said the lord will do it point number three the identifiable evidence of inner holiness now you understand outward holiness 
Anybody can copy that. Superficial holiness, anybody can produce that. At least when they are with other people, they can check themselves, control themselves, monitor themselves, and minimize the things they express and they say. It will appear they are holy. We're not talking about inward holiness. What's the evidence? I give you the evidence from the men who see the evidences from Enoch, Joseph, Daniel, Stephen, Lazarus, Titus, Paul, and others. As we look at these people, you will see these were people that were conscious of God, conscious of heaven. And their surrounding did not have such imposing influence on them that they could not live the life they ought to live. They didn't care about what people thought, what people might say. Genesis chapter 5. In Genesis chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 22. It says in verse 22, Genesis chapter 5, And Enoch walked with God. Sunshine or rain, And Enoch walked with God. Approval or disapproval of people, And Enoch walked with God. Bloom or gloom, And Enoch walked with God appreciated or despised and Enoch walked with God wife in agreement or children in disagreement and Enoch walked with God the people there around him they were imagining evil and doing evil from day to day and every action of them and every mind they have every imagination of man was evil continually and Enoch walked with God this was a person not affected by the weather by the custom by the tradition by the things that that were at that time by the politics of the day by the condition of the time and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and he begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years and Enoch walked with God marriage and Enoch walked with God I mean children boys and girls sons and daughters and Enoch walked with God. And the sons and the daughters were not rapturable. And Enoch walked with God. Enoch went with God. And the family went the other direction. And Enoch kept on walking with God. That's the holiness. That's deep conviction. That's deep sacrifice. That's deep consecration. He walked with God Joseph we're looking at Genesis chapter 39 Genesis chapter 39 I'm reading from verse 7 Genesis chapter 39 verse 7 remember at this time Joseph had been sold to slavery father was not there mother was not there the people who believed the same doctrine from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, they were not there. Nobody to check him. Nobody to examine him. Nobody to discipline him. Nobody to take anything away from him. They also say, man, his heart was just after God. Genesis chapter 39 verse 7 And it came to pass after these six That his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph And she said, lie with me This was not Joseph going out after anything This was a reputable woman This was a somehow respected woman is the wife of the master an older woman in all probability 
And the older woman talking to the younger Joseph, come on, do this. But he refused. Nobody was in. He refused. Nobody to tell. He refused. And said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not what is not what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Ah, God, you allowed me to be sold as a slave. No, you didn't think of that. Holiness goes beyond my physical condition. God, you gave me a dream. I've not seen the fulfillment of the dream. He said, that's in God's side. I'm going to be holy. And then here I am. This only family that has taken me in. If they throw me out of this family, where will I live? Where will be my accommodation? He said, that's not the point. Holiness unto the Lord. He said, how can I do this and sin against my God? And it came to pass as she, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that she aching not unto her to lie by her or even to be with her, now separated himself physically from her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within privacy lends strength to temptation secrecy lends power to temptation nobody there that she caught him by garment, saying lie with me and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out this is before moses this is before the Ten Commandments were given expressly. This is before the time of Jesus. This is Genesis. And this man, like Enoch, he had this experience with the Lord. And he says, nothing will tarnish the inward holiness that I have. Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, we're reading from verse 4. Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Verse 1, rather. All through to verse 4. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom and hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was forced that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage then this daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was found was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But he could, they could find no occasion nor fault. For as much, for as much, he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. And then they conspired. You know, the edict they tried to bring up. If anybody will ask God anything, apart from asking the king, these 30 days, he'll be thrown to the lion's den. A man of, convic of conviction. The lion's den was there. And he knew. They had signed an edict that was irreversible. He said, even if I will die, I will die a man of conviction. Even if I'll be eaten up by the lions, I will be eaten up 
with my conviction intact is the holiness of heart that does not fear the loss of a job the frowning of a Darius the conspiracy of men and women of power against him and so verse 10 now when Daniel knew that writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time conviction in Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 we read about Stephen we're looking at chapter 6 of Acts and we're reading from verse 3 wherefore brethren look ye out among you seven men of honest report check up their business practice honest report check up how they got their certificates they're going for extramural studies and they tell us they're now getting in a, a higher degree or right, it's an mba it's in business and they go to all these evening classes check up on this report how they got those certificates full of the holy ghost and wisdom who may who, whom we may appoint over this business verse 5 and the same pleased the whole multitude and he chose stephen he passed the test but then look at his life look at chapter 7 verse 51 as he now declared the word of the lord to them without fear without favor ye stiff neck uncircumcised in heart and ears ye do always receive the holy ghost as your fathers did so do ye verse 55 but he being full of the holy ghost he looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of god and jesus standing in the right hand of god they stoned him eventually verse 58 and casting him out of the city stoned him and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young young man's feet whose name was Saul and the stone Stephen calling upon God saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit holy man of God look at Lazarus we're looking at chapter 16 of Luke Luke chapter 16 reading from verse 19 Luke 16 verse 19 there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and feared sumptuously every day and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed for the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and leech his sores and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. He was poor. The poverty did not take him to heaven. He was sick and sickly. The sickness did not take him to heaven. He was deprived of the normal things of life. The deprivation did not take him to heaven. What took him to heaven? Even in the Old Testament, they knew. Because Lazarus here, that Jesus told the story about, 
was actually an Old Testament character. And in the Old Testament, they knew what will take people to heaven in Psalm 24, reading from verse 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. He was poor, he will not steal. He was deprived of these earthly goods, but he will not question God. He will not accuse God. He will not forsake God. He will not say, why am I serving God? And then blaspheme the name of the Lord because of his poverty. No job. No sustenance. No healing. No health. Nothing that you'll say was favorable. And yet, he lived the life that made the angels to carry him to Abraham's bosom. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Those are the people in what holiness, in what righteousness before we can get to heaven, Psalm 51 verse 10 in Psalm 51 verse 10 says create in me a clean heart O God and renew a right spirit within me Old Testament characters yet holy inwardly Titus in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 2 Corinthians chapter 12, reading from verse 16. It says in verse 16, But be it so, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18, I desire Titus, was he my sainted brother, did Titus make a gain of you? What we not in the same spirit? What we not in the same steps? You see, he said, I sent Titus to you. I wasn't there with him. He was, he was there. Wasn't he faithful? Did he not walk exactly as I've been teaching you? Titus. Chapter 2, verse 14. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Paul. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Ye are witnesses, but a witness is not the end, and God also. You can witness my outward action, and God can witness my inward attitude, experience. Ye are witnesses, and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believed the lord did it for all these people from the old testament to the new testament from the old covenant to the new covenant and god has not changed and his desires his demand his delight has not changed what he expected at that time is expecting today holiness before him before God, all the days of our lives, He'll give us the power. I said He'll give us the power, perpetual power, to live that life, a life of true righteousness and true holiness. Romans chapter 1, power and holiness. Holiness and power. 
Romans chapter 1 verse 4 and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead holiness we need his power to do it to have it to possess it in what holiness that will then reflect in a character of holiness psalm 110 psalm 110 from verse 1 the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool that the father talking to christ our savior sanctifier the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength unto Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. That was the dew of thy youth. The power and the holiness he has the power today and as we come to him i will say lord the old man is crucified the body of sin can be destroyed and we come back to calvary and we want power present power practical power prevailing power perpetual power to live in holiness and righteousness before God all the days of our life. As we come to Calvary for that power, tonight, He will send that power. He will fill your heart, saturate your heart. He will sanctify your heart. And then it will not be a temporary experience. It will be a perpetual experience. Having perpetual power to live a truly holiness life within and without. Faithfully see who calls you, who also will do it. Let's rise up and tell the Lord we need this power, perpetual. We need this power practical we need this power prevailing so this holiness in what holiness light and holiness deep holiness the one that god will see and say i've done that work in you talk to the lord you will do it.